Hey guys, Richie here. Welcome back to another build series. This is part number one, which will do the intro on the cockpit, and it's for this beast of a kit. This beautiful 32nd scale F-16 CJ from Tamiya. Hey guys, what's up? Richie here for another build. This time I'm giving my eyes a rest. The last build I did the KC-135 and 144 scale. Now we're working way, all the way, way back up to 30 second scale. And as you've already seen, we're building this beast. Um, what can I say about this kit? I've um, not built this before, but it's well renowned and has a reputation of being the best 30 second scale modern fast jet kit you can buy, um, the Tamiya F-16 CJ Fighting Falcon, or Viper as it's now known. Um, it's just great, it's such a great kit out of the box, you get a lot of stuff in here, you get uh, radar, you get the gun, you get I think all the pods, I mean, magnetic or they come removable, all the pods and the um, armament, you even get chocks with this, and um, <laughs> So a little photo etch, you get pretty much everything in this box, you don't really go crazy, need to go crazy aftermarket. Um, so what am I going to do? I want to do this one um, on the ground as always, probably with the engine out. I'm trying to source another engine if possible. I tried Tamiya and he told me that they're pretty much out right now with all the COVID stuff. They don't have anything, shipments from Japan, so they don't have any spare parts I can buy. So um, we'll wait and see if I can get one of those. If not, maybe I can put a resin engine in or something. But I wouldn't mind having an engine in the jet and have the other engine on the side just for a display so I can have two engines kind of thing. Um, We'll see how that goes as we go through the build and what we do with that. I did kind of think about doing this in half glass, half glass 5 scheme, but I know um, Read Air Publications do some decals for the Block 50. Now, this is a Block 50, um, which is a little bit rare to kind of find, find some decals for, um, hard to find. Um, but they do have Block 50 half glass decals. But they're 30 bucks, and by the time I bought half glass paint and the rest of the stuff, we're in this enough 50 bucks, which you know, I can buy another kit or two for that, so that's a little too much. I think I spent enough as it is on this kit, so I'm not going to do half glass. I'm going to go to traditional scheme. I was kind of thinking about going for one of the Desert Storm one, Operation Iraqi Freedom, um, on the box here, which comes with it. The but now I'm thinking I might go with a Op Resonate North from '99 scheme, and that is um, Afterburner decals. Do that. So I might pick that setup again. The decals will be a game time decision. I've, I've got plenty of work to do before I get to that stage. Um, I kind of fancy Op Resonate North because I do actually have a medal on my wall downstairs from when I served and did Op Resonate South. So for those who don't know, Op Resonate North and South were the North and the Southern no fly zones in Iraq, back um, between the two Gulf Wars. Um, pretty much North, I believe Northern fly zone was Inchlik, Turkey, the base and the south where I, where I was was peace out prince sultan air base in saudi arabia um was the main one but also they had um ali al salam and a bunch of other ones in um, kuwait and surrounding areas bahrain and stuff as well for the south um but that's what i'm kind of thinking so tied in so I'm, i might pick those, those decals are like 10 bucks so i'm they have the pretty kind of generic but i do have like a nice kind of like um, north, up resonate north kind of logo on the side so I'll probably go down that route when I get to it. Um, aftermarket wise again it's really good out of the box I did get the obligatory resin seat this is an Ares one the Asus 2 and 30 second scale as with some other builds before I commit to using this I'll see how the kit one is the kit one looks fine I know it has some photo etch harnesses and stuff there'll be no need to use this just unnecessarily so I was frozen on eBay, so we'll wait and see um, what the kit one looks like before we decide where to go resin. Big thing with these F-16s is the big mouth, as this one is, the Block 50, and getting it seamless inside the intake. If for whatever reason I have an issue with that, I got a backup plan, and that's the Mastercaster's fog covers, resin fog covers. This is MST32093, um, the soft insert fog covers. So. And this is kind of nice too because you paint these red and it kind of really pops against the grey. So you have one for the front and one for the back. So I got fog covers, which again I might I might not use. And the other thing I have in my hand right here is the I kind of got this just just see how it is, but 
basically it's generic stencil data masks. Now this is Edward number XL520, and this is especially for the F16, this kit. So I'm not sure how you can see that, but basically, rather than having those tons of little decals for like no step and well, no step and lift here and all the generic kind of stencil data on here, rather than using decals, these are little um, painting masks made out of photo apps. So you can just place, the, place it down on your kit and just spray it on with paint um, rather than using a decal, which probably look a little better. So I bought these and I thought, well, this is not necessarily just for the F16, but I've got an F. What, an F14 in 30 second scale, I've got a Growler for 30 second scale, and some other ones, like the walkway and no step and stuff. It's pretty much generic to all kind of fast jets on this time period, so I'll probably get some use out of this one. So I got this just to really try it and for giggles, just to see how it works. The only other thing which I don't have yet, which I've ordered, are the air scale instrument decals, generic kind of modern decals. Um, just because I'm going with the kit parts I'm not uh, you can get a resin Aries resin C, um, cockpit set for this but it's I've looked online and it's a bit of a mess you have to kind of do major surgery to get it in there I don't want to do it in this expensive and nice kit so I'm going with the the kit plastic for the cockpit up um, but surprisingly it has no kind of it has a couple of decals for the main like M MCDs but the other parts are just blank. There's no decals on this kit, which is very unsurprisingly surprising to me. So, um, to get that extra little bit of detail, I don't want to go photo like Edward color photo etch on this because in this scale it's too two D. I like it more three D. So I'm gonna go like I say, go to kit parts, and I'm gonna order the tiny little instrument panels like artificial horizons and all the others. So hopefully they fit into the gaps. So um, once it's all painted up, I'll use those little decals to put in there to give us the extra detail and. I've never used them before, but found it a really nice. Um, I've ordered the 40 f scale and 30 second scale ones, just for various kits. And like I said, you get tons of, basically tons of little dials and stuff. And that is pretty much it as an intro. So what we'll do is, um, the instructions call out for the engine part first, but I always like to start with the cockpit. So this episode, obviously we're working on the cockpit. So we'll switch the camera down to the bench and let's start building and talking about the cockpit you get with this set. Here we are. I've kind of assembled it. It's not all glued. I just kind of put it together to see. And um, one nice thing too is you see the lens. I, I this might be too much information, but I typically film this on 11 to 22 millimeter wide lens on my my M50 camera. I just put a 50 millimeter lens, the Nifty 50, and you can see how close we get here in great um, detail. So I think this might be the way to go. So. This is you see it's super small. You see by my finger here, and the, each square is a centimeter big. So hopefully you can see it. So let's go with no problems. Well, I say no problems. <laughs> Within like literally two minutes of starting this, I lost something to Carpet Monster. This tiny, if it zooms, oh, way too close probably. There you go. See, see my finger there? That tiny little piece there on the side. I lost that. I dropped it to Carpet Monster. And as always, I was on my hands and knees for 20 minutes. I couldn't find that thing. And a little bit later on in the evening, I went down and looked again and I found it. So. <laughs> Who would known? Off, nice, nice kit. Um, and within a couple of minutes, losing a part is never a good thing. But luckily, I found it and immediately glued that thing right on there. With plenty of glue, so I'm not going to lose that thing again. Um, so yeah, here it is. I can assemble it, dry fit it, that side panel on, um, and it's looking really good. Um, nice fit. As you can see, I'm using the Tamiya seat, which we'll talk about in a minute. But as I mentioned, it's just all um, just loosely put together. So I can just pull this off. It makes, obviously makes it easier for painting. And the seat slides right out. And the back of this guy comes out too. I think. Oops. Back panel. There you go. So it all comes apart. Make it hold it much easier to paint each part individually and then put it together. Um, so what should we talk about? So I did actually go ahead and glue the panels onto the um, switch panels onto the, the main tub. I was going to do it separately and glue them, but you know what? Just like this, it's really easy to handle and easy to paint. There's no big problem. So I'll go ahead and paint paint this as one piece. So this bit is glued together. And um, yep, so it'll be painted and all these must be picked out, which you'll see a little bit later on. The sides are obviously done. You should put it back in the camera shot so you can see it. The little um, control sticks and stuff, just cut rid of paint. I'm going to put them in a little box in a minute, tubbleware so I don't lose them. The pedals, 
Now, the thing to know about pedals is the pedals go there, those two little holes, but you've got to put in the. You actually, there are a couple of screws actually go in there. So a couple of screws go in and um, focus. A couple of screws go in there to, to attach this screws down to the fuselage. So before you get the pedals, you'll make sure you screw this in to the lower fuselage, and then the pedals just go sit over top of it. So don't glue the pedals in first and paint them all together because that's not going to work because the screws aren't going to fit. Um, this one little quick tip. Um, what else? Um, so this guy's somewhat assembled. The instrument panel. So some clear parts go behind it. Obviously, we're going to paint all that first. Um, be, so we paint a mixture of the greys will be dark gold grey and then black for the switch panels and then we'll then highlight with a cocktail stick or a toothpick anywhere in the world we'll highlight all those little buttons and, and make it pop like I mentioned also ordered the micro scale in the sorry the aero scale I think it is um, I've got the name it's, I've lost it, but I've also had little instrument panels which I mentioned earlier too um, to, to go on there too to make it pop a little bit. Um, so paint all this up and it will get glued together afterwards. Um, so see. This is the resin one. Which looks okay. It's a lot softly molded. And here's a kit one. To me, I actually like to get one better. Um, to let you know, this pad thing is just clicked in. I didn't glue it because I'm going to paint it separately again, make it a little bit easier. Um, but overall, this one, I mean, the cushion kind of maybe looks a little nicer on this one. But, I mean, the kit one's perfect the way it is. Plus, you got the added bonus of it has already, obviously, engineered to fit onto the, oop, the rail behind it. So, it just fits on the rail, slides in. I mean, you don't even have to glue it, so you could pull it out of the cockpit at any time, really. Um, so it fits perfectly like that. If I went with that, the resin one, it's not designed for this kit, so it wouldn't fit on the rails and all the rest of it. So just shows you that, you know, it's not always, off the market doesn't always mean most stuff. So this one will be put in the box and use for another kit, and I'll use the kit one. So if you think about building this kit, again, um, the kit is perfectly good, so I'll save you another $10, I guess, of using this guy. Once it's paved up and um, dry brushed and stuff, it'll look really good. Plus, you get the P straps with the kit as well, and the buckle, little buckles and stuff. So, I think it's going to look pretty good. Plus, uh, as I mentioned, the added bonus of actually fits and slides on the, the rail and fits perfectly in the seats. So there's no engineering or no surgery or any worries like that to think about. Um, also, just one thing to note too is just a polycat goes in the bottom of the instrument panel, what it sits in. And what else? That's pretty much it really for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start priming these up, all these little pieces, and then get them ready for paint. And then um, I'll get the paint on, and then we'll come back in a little bit later on, and we'll talk about um, what we've done and the rest of the cockpit build. Okay, we're back. So, been busy. So since I last saw you, I went ahead and primed everything with the Mr. Surfacer Black 1500. And then I did my usual of creating a shadow effect with using the Game Air 72701. I like using this, uh, not so Game Air, but it's acrylic Game Air, all model color, just because it's a little thicker. So it's um, it really covers the black a lot better and creates that shadow effect compared to lacquer paints. I know in previous build videos, I mentioned it really matter, but actually having tried other ones, it does make a big difference. So a thicker acrylic paint works better to cover the um, Mr. Surface of Black. <laughs> what else? Um, so you can see here in front of me, um, so how I painted this was I pretty much, I kind of like the, the kind of color of the black Mr. Surface, so the kind of the sheen, like slight sheen and kind of the finish it gives. So I want to use that for the, for the, for the cockpit panels. So I actually masked that off very carefully with masking tape, as you can probably see in the picture if I remember to put it up, and um, painted the, the, the gray over it. Um, as always, it's dark gold gray for modern US, which is FS36231. I know I mention this every video I do in a modern aircraft from the USAF, but or um, Navy, but it's this is a 
the bottle keeps on giving. You don't use much as paint, and this MRP paint I have here, I've used for a couple of years and barely really used any. Um, just a little drop is all you need, and it's a gift that keeps on giving. So, what I did was I masked up, painted it, um, as you can see here, the panels, and to be honest, I had a little bit of bleed is because of, of the raised, the raised um, buttons and stuff. So I had to kind of mask it up again, some parts, and kind of respray it. So I did my handy, um, this is one millimeter super thin masking tape. Um, really handy for masking um, around tight areas. I highly recommend um, picking up what, it, there's different brands, but this um, one millimeter is really handy size to have in your tool kit. Um, the Tamiya one I think starts around six millimeter. So this is definitely a lot thinner. Um, so I got this little space I needed and I repainted it. And then once I painted the black areas, I was a little bit nervous because I get hit and miss results with the, this Tamiya panel line cover the color. This is gray, um, but what I did was I just, it's enamel based. I just basically just, I get like a cocktail stick here to show you. I basically just tapped it in the gaps and it just ran, the capillary effects just ran through. Let's see if we get and create those lines to the panels which actually look really good um, you can see on that side too just subtly just just it kind of just again just ran between the, the lines and just just a tiny little bit just very carefully again just touched it and let it flow and it created those kind of um, gaps between the panels which I really wanted as you can see this side is a little bit different this side I actually went through and kind of highlighted some of the buttons this side I've not done yet but you can again see the difference and what kind of difference that makes too um, so how I do that is, my go-to color is sky gray model color. And I just put a little bit of my palette right here. And all I do is just take a tiny little bit drop on the bottom of my toothpick. And then... It's really hard to do on the camera. I mean, just I see I made a little mess up, but you just basically touch the top of the button. You see I splurged all over the place. So I'm just going to take a Q-tip because this is water-based and just wipe it off. I'm going to do this off camera because it's really detailed work in a real steady hand and try and do it around a camera. It's not going to work for me. So I uh, wiped away. So basically I'm just going to go through. That's how I do it and touch up the rest of the buttons. When I've done that, I'll pull up some reference pictures and check. I think a couple of these might be yellow or red. And same same deal. I just use pick those colors out and paint them. Um, and we'll do that. I looked at the clip I just filmed from the previous clip, and I can def sorry, apologize for the. Um, you can hear the noise of the focus it's taking a long, really long time for this lens to focus, and it's um, making you hear the noise of the focusing as well in the film, which isn't ideal. It's it's good for still pictures. When it comes to video, it's not really getting um, what I need. But that being said, um, for the rest of this. This part, I'm going to stick with this lens because you can actually see um, close up of the, this cockpit better than my other lens. And then my, when we switch to the other videos of the build series, I'll go back to my usual 11 to 22 mil, um, which focuses a lot quicker and it's um, a little bit further out, um, which we'll need. And just for this detail work, this this kind of macro lens works really good for you to actually pick up the detail and see what I'm doing. Um, so let me go ahead and f finish off doing a few more little buttons and stuff, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the next part. Okay, here we go. So, a lot of progress being made, as you can see. Now, firstly, the disclaimer is I'm not a very good hand painter. Whenever possible, cockpits, I always use decals or photo etch and stuff. Um, so, I tried my best with this. I think it turned out okay. And also, remember, this camera is zoomed in quite significantly. So, each square here is a centimeter big. So, you can see all my imperfections and stuff, which you won't necessarily see to the eye. Um, but, really happy how it turned out. Strange thing is... Um, with this and Tamiya, this kit has a lot of detail. I mean, you're getting chocks with it, you're getting removable flight tags with it, you're getting all kinds of stuff. I just don't know why they didn't give it the in decals for the instrument dials. It's, it's strange to me. I mean, you get the, the two for the main screens, if you can see that, but the instruments, the two or three, you know, analog instruments like artificial horizon and stuff, you don't get. I don't know why they didn't include that. But anyway, like I said, like I said earlier, um, I've got the decals on the way. Um, separately from a different company which I can add on and that pr pretty much finished the cockpit. So one thing to note too is with this guy the rail for the seat I glued it back in 
And then I realized, looking forward in instructions, which I'll show in a minute, there's actually a hole behind it for a screw. So just if you're building this one, just beware that um, just don't glue that back until it's actually fixed into the fuselage and screwed, and then that hides the screw. Um, all this stuff's loose. Um, this comes right out, so I can have the decals. This side wall I did glue in, the other side wall I didn't, so I could access. Um, let me show you the instructions real quick about the, the screw bit I'm talking about. There you go. So you can see right here, but there's a screw that goes right behind it, and there's a screw. This is a metal weight, nose weight you get with the kit too. So as I mentioned earlier, underneath the pedals, so you got a screw in the front and a screw in the back. Once that's screwed in, then you can glue this back, back position and have the seat. Now we're up to section 32 in this, so it's quite unusual. Normally, normally in um, modern jets, you do cockpit first, but with this, you'd work in the engine first. Um, so I'm doing a little bit out of order, and the cockpit, like I say, the cockpit comes up kind of halfway through the instructions. Okay, as you can see here, I've also, with out of the way a little bit, you can see I've done the seat. Again, out of the box with the straps, and it's looking really good. I'm really happy how it turned out. Um, also, the bonus obviously it came to the kit, so it's going to fit perfectly, and it has the area at the back so you can slide it up and down on the rail. Um, so no surgery required. Now the instructions call for it to be the gold, dark gold grey, same as the cockpit, um, which as you know I use the MRP 100. Now just for a little bit of visual interest, I wanted to do it slightly shade off, so I went for XF 53, um, which is very similar color. It's neutral grey, um, but just add a little bit off. Um, gray from the cockpit so it's add a little bit of visual interest and um, difference um, so it stand out more but other than that I used all the colors the same as what was in the instructions being Tamiya the instructions always have such great color call outs for everything you can see all the different colors um, the only thing is I used more color paint for hand painting rather than Tamiya because Tamiya is a little bit tricky for me to hand paint as most people. So where it says kind of black, for example, I'd use black um, model color or khaki, I used khaki model color. Um, so that's the seat. Um, straps, a little bit complicated and very kind of tricky to do. Um, you can see that section there. Basically you're making up the different um, straps, which are numbered A, B, C, and D there with uh, masking tape. Excuse the beep in the background, that's the laundry machine. And uh, the metal photo etcher comes with it for the buckles. I and mean, then it shows you there where to go onto the seat. So, on the mask sheet here, you basically have, I've got one strip left over, but you have basically have three strips and just very carefully cut it out. Um, stay inside the line because if you cut it too thick, it's not gonna fit in the buckle, which I found out. So you cut your strip off on instructions, it tells you how long, um, of roughly about two centimeters per piece, I think it is. So once you have that, you then take the photo etch, buckle and you according to which piece it is you then feed it through the buckle um, very tricky um, to, two things you notice it's very tiny but the um, you're dealing with adhesive tape so it keeps sticking on itself as well but I got there in the end with a lot of patience um, it's also nice you see here they actually give you two everything so if you drop one you have a spare or eternally if you're doing another aces two seat and different model kit you have a strap belt buckles ready to go which is nice so um, yeah, so you get two or two everything, um, which is kind of a little bit strange too, because sometimes they do this because for different versions, but obviously they only do a one seat version of the F-16. They don't do any two seat versions, um, just Tamiya. Anyway, we got those extras, which is not, again nice if you drop one or lose one. And um, yeah, so added the belts, not tons of belts on this one. And um, yeah, looking really good. One thing it did ask to do is once you've, what I did once I attached the, attached the photo etch, I'm sorry, not the photo etch, the, um, the masks, um, belts, because they have some pattern on them, but they want to paint them green, so I just went over to look very light with some green just to, add, to have some colors to those. Um, you can see it's weathered. Really kind of happy that turned out. Now, weathering, I used my, excuse me one minute, I'll grab the bottles. Okay, I'm gonna get, I forgot to put them back. So I'm used to my favorite, as you, followers of the show will know, I really like the Citadel oil, especially for figure painting or cockpit details. They work really good. Um, acrylic, water-based, um, totally safe. Um, Agraf Earth, Earthshade is brown, Non Oil is black. They do tons of different colors. Um, pretty much black, brown, and flesh colors all I have and really all I need. Um, they're not the cheapest of things, but they do last a long time. I literally use a couple of drops per kit. And if you can see here, you can see where the, where liquids in the bottle it's almost full i've had this um, probably a year 
Um, so these will last a long time. I really do like these. Um, again, nice oils, especially known oil. Um, so known oil I used for the seat itself and the Agraf Earthshade, which is a brown I used for the seat cushion. You can see it pulled out all that detail of the um, seat, cut some dirt and all the um, kind of padding and stuff on there. So yeah, really kind of happy how that turned out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the decals for the instruments and we'll go ahead and put those on and then this cockpit is gonna be finished. Okay, with the power of editing, it's been a few days and my airscale decals have arrived, which I must say arrived very quickly indeed from the UK. Um, so here in the US, it was like under a week. So good job, guys. So as I mentioned earlier, um, I bought two. I bought the 48 scale one and the 32nd scale one, which is exactly the same, but obviously just different sizes for scales. So as I mentioned earlier, you can see here all these decals, different instruments. And this is the 48 scale one I'm looking at here. I mean, if you look at the 32nd, it's the exact same, just a little bit bigger. Now, I do like the um, instructions. They call it pilot's notes. <laughs> Interesting. And I was a little bit concerned because reading the instructions, it mentions about using a sharp knife and cutting around them. So I thought, oh man, these tiny little decals aren't kind of die cut. You have to cut each one individually. But fortunately, not the case. Um, they are typical decals. And they just slide right off just with no carrier film. Um, perfect, just right size around the de the um, the dial. So again, here you go. So I've done it. So I applied them. So what what did I do? So basically, I found some good reference online. I'll post it in the description below the link, um, which basically is a really good website. I just found this Google image, and it basically shows you what each dial is and explains it. So then all I did then was my little card here. If it focuses. There you go. You can see it, it tells what it is. So, for example, number 12 is a horizontal well, HSI or whatever it is. Um, my, I have my glasses on. It's so small I can barely read it. But um, anyway, so I basically just cross-referred that reference guide to what I needed. And um, then what I did, I looked on the actual tub, cockpit tub on the instrument panel and saw how big kind of like the area was. And then looking between the 32nd and the 48th, I kind of figured out which is the best fit. Now I'm glad I bought both because actually on this kit, the instrument size dials, actually you can see here where I cut out, most of them are actually 48 scale. So I went, most of them I used 48. I think maybe just one I used was um, 30 second scale. So I just really kind of matched up the size of the um, instrument bezel. So let me hold it closer and show you what we've got going on here. And I'm not sure how well you can see that at all to be honest with you. It's so tight. There you go. And you can kind of see the instruments. I did a couple on I think it's the point. I did a couple here, one there, um, one here. As you can see the big artificial horizon there, another one up here. And a couple tucked in there, which you're not going to see. So what I played, what, five or six? Um, I think it makes a huge difference. And again, I'm not sure how well you can see on this camera, to be honest with you. It's super tiny. Um, in real life, you can see a little bit more clearer. Um, but those instruments certainly add a little bit of detail. So after I added the instruments, um, you set and sole. And once they, once they kind of fully dried, I went with some crystal clear, which is PVA, PVA glue, which dries clear. Hence the name. Um, I just, top of a toothpick, I just add a little bit and then dabbed it in the instrument, on top of the instrument to create kind of like a little bit of a dome. And then when it dried, it kind of creates that little glass kind of effect. Again, with super tiny, there you go, that's about the focal point there. So you can see how it looks kind of a little bit shiny and a little bit kind of like, like it's glass in front of it. And that's what I did. So I think it makes a big difference. Um, again, I'm not sure why to me it include any instrument decal. Um, made up for what I bought there. So well, these were more expensive, I think like £6.75 each, um, plus a little bit of shipping, which wasn't very much at all from the UK. But like I said, they arrived really quick, um, and you got probably half a dozen of each type. So this is gonna, this is really nice to keep in your spares drawer, and this will last a long time, because like so you see how many, you have multiples of every single one. Um, so there's tons of decals. So yeah, really good, um, really made a big difference. So 
that is pretty much it. A really long video, longer than I normally do. Apologize for the waffling and stuff. It's just, this obviously includes the instruction and the cockpit, and the cockpit involves a lot of detail work, which I showed you here. Um, so I'm gonna end this video right now. So this finishes the cockpit. Um, later on in the build, we'll actually add this to the main fuselage and the seat. But as I mentioned earlier, you need to screw it in, um, move a couple of things, and um, actually screw it into the lower fuselage um, before you can do that. So. What I'll do is um, next week we'll be back and we'll talk about a different subjects, which will probably be the intakes and the gear. Um, but until then, have a good one and I'll see you next week. Goodbye.